been a while since we live streamed here, but uh, here I am. Nice to uh, be back with you all. Uh, let me see something I want to set right here. Okay, so um, a lot of people have been sending me emails asking, you know, whether through WhatsApp messages and groups I'm in, or even students that I've actually not really had much contact with. Like, I don't even know some of the people that are emailing me. Uh, asking about whether or not to wait for the step one to become pass fail in January 26, 2022 before taking it. Now, this is a question that is actually, as I check later on, all over the internet. Like people are asking each other on Reddit forums, people are asking each other in Facebook groups. It's just, it's everywhere. Everyone wants to know what should they do. Now, that being said, um, you know, it seems like a lot of people are very confused on what they should do. But the truth of the matter is, do not wait. There was a reason that people want to wait, right? So a lot of people that are, are wondering whether or not they should wait for the uh, step one to become pass fail are waiting because they have a feeling they're not really gonna pass, right? That's one of the scary things there that uh, is bothering all of them. And uh, so, you know, think about this first of all, right? All the people that have failed step one so far took step one knowing that they were possibly going to not break the score they wanted to break. A lot of people have different uh, expectations, different goals, but generally speaking, most people want to break 220, and then if you can break 240, that's the next milestone over. These people that took step one knowing that there's a, a pass-fail number, right, that you have to do like better than 196 and stuff, um, they still failed. Right? They, they had the fear, they had the, the passion, and the two were clashing, and they're doing their best, but they still failed. Now, if you're going to go in and take step one when it becomes pass-fail, the fear level of passing and failing is it's much more tilted off. You don't really have much of a fear of failing because you're just hoping that you can make that bare minimum and actually pass. And you're also hoping at some point that you won't have to put in as much effort to pass that maybe you could just get a 200 and pass and your 200 or 240 are gonna be the same thing in that step one. It's just gonna be a P, nothing else, right? You're just gonna get that pass and then that's it. However, this is gonna be really detrimental in the long run. So if we take a look at the ECFMG uh, letter here, they just say United States Medical Licensing Exam, step one score reporting will transition to pass fail outcomes only for administrations on or after January 26, 2022. Step one exams administered before that date will include a three digit numeric score. Outcomes for step one administrations occurring before January 26 will continue to include a three digit score and pass fail. Step two clinical knowledge and step three exam will continue to be reported as a three digit, three digit score. So that being said, there's a lot to think about here now. Think about those people that are studying their asses off to do the best they can to kill step one. Then they go on to take step two, and uh, even with their ample preparation, they struggle. They have some trouble with it, they're, they're not completely prepared for it, and oftentimes a lot of people who killed step one actually end up doing just as good on step two. So maybe they got like a 224 on step one, they'll get about the same on step two as well because of the hard work they put into it during step one prep. See, when you sit down for step two prep, you don't do the same things you did for step one prep. Step one has a bunch of other topics like biochem and nitty gritty little things here and there that you don't really need to worry about too much when it comes to clinical knowledge step two, where you're really just gonna be asked whether or not to order an ultrasound or an MRI or whatever, right? This is next step kind of questions. So there it's really much more medical. It's more about being a doctor rather than knowing, you know, what is the pathophysiology is something really extremely technical, okay? So now you need to study your ass off for step one so that you have built that determination to kill step two. If you start slacking on your step one prep, then take the pass fail version, pass, then sit down for step two. Well now think about this, that step two is still coming out with a three digit score, right? So if that three digit score isn't something really remarkable, then it's gonna be really bad for you, right? And the chances of it being that remarkable now that you're not really struggling and working really, really hard for step one, not that high, not that high. So the fact that you're going to start slacking on your step one prep because it became a pass-fail test will actually show in your step two. 
and you don't want that you definitely do not want that right you want to be able to get a great a pretty good or great score on step one and then a better score on step two and, and actually show that improvement with the three digit scoring system so if you've been studying for step one there's absolutely no reason right now in April to waste another six months right and then think about preparing for uh, January step uh, step one that it just doesn't make any sense you know from from now in, in six months from now you can actually kill step one you can finish step one right now and you'd be done you know and then start preparing for step two but if you wait out from right now all the way to January and just waste this entire year because you feel like you want to take that step one it's going to be pretty excessive in fact if you're studying for step one right now and you sign up for a date later on after January 26 by that time let's just say February then um, by February you're going to be so well prepared for step one you'll actually wish it was a three digit score right there's two types of people people that want it to be a pass fail test and people that don't want it to be a pass fail test the ones that want it to be a pass fail test are the ones that think that think they're going to uh, score something around a 200 not so good right the people that don't want it to be a pass fail test are the ones that know they're going to break 240 right they want to show and be proud of that 240 plus you should be part of that group and if you're at, at at a cornerstone, at a, at a benchmark where you think that you're not going to break 240, you don't feel very comfortable in yourself, you don't see yourself doing very well on your practice questions, on UWorld, AMBOSS, NBME exams, whatever it might be, then you need to reevaluate whether or not you're ready for step. It doesn't matter if it's a pass for the test or not. right? You need to consider something that a lot of students struggle considering, which is whether or not to postpone. If you've already picked your date, it might actually be best to just postpone now if you're not feeling very comfortable you, know, you just get through that and uh, push that test over keep studying keep revising and doing your best to master everything as much as possible right you need to be able to talk about topics without the book in front of you that's one of the most critical things because you're not gonna have that book in front of you when you're standing in front of your attending during residency and they ask you oh yeah Amir what do you think is wrong with this patient or what do you think we should order for this patient right now you're just going to be left blank because you didn't master the topic, right? You didn't truly understand the technical little things about that topic that were supposed to be just natural information for you. So don't, do not wait for this test to become pass fail, right? On top of that, one last thing I want to point out is that if you do wait for this test to become pass fail, there is no saying what other changes are going to take place by January 2022, right? In the next two months, they can announce another thing. You know, maybe they're gonna come up with a new CS. Who knows? Anything can really happen. No one truly predicted that the CS exam would be canceled, right? There were, there were slight predictions of it because of COVID and travel and all that stuff, but not really. People were not really thinking, oh yeah, CS is gonna get, get rid of, no. And no one really foresaw the score changes that were gonna happen for step one, no one foresaw that they were gonna add more ethics questions to step one, and then all of a sudden it was announced, and of course it wasn't a sudden change for us, we had time to prepare, but it was announced and then everyone panicked, right? Because ethics is one of those things that students who, especially students who are coming from the East, really struggle with. The ethics of American medicine are very different from medicine, let's say in India, right? Because I'm from India, so I know that over there, if a woman goes, you know, if a young woman uh, goes to a hospital and she's pregnant the doctor will not hesitate in telling her parents that their daughter is pregnant that, That's the typical uh, Practice over there, but here in America you lose your license for doing that And then you just you're jobless for life in a sense So, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen and you don't want to be part of that uncertainty You know get your three-digit score kill that test and then do even better on step two because you put in all those rigorous study hours into your step one exam and then just be proud of what you get and keep working towards what you need to do. On top of that, if you're, you know, if you're still studying for your step one score, then keep in mind, I do offer tutoring courses where I literally sit down with students uh, every week. We get together on our Discord channel and talk about all kinds of things as we go through the, the study materials, similar to how I used to do it on my YouTube videos before. And then on top of that, you get access to all of my materials as well. So anyone that's interested in signing up for any of that, just feel free to shoot me an email and uh, we can talk about setting you up. It's not based off of any timeline, so you can sign up whenever you want to and your timeline starts on that day. The step one course is a three month course, so is the step two course. 
and you could do both together or sign up for them individually or just buy some of the resources based off of whatever you think you might need um and you know as usual feel free to reach out anytime thanks a lot for joining guys and good luck